Have you ever been captivated by the way a motorcycle goes around corners? Ever seen a MotoGP rider dragging shoulder through a corner and wondered how the heck are they even staying upright on that thing? Motorcycles going around corners can be pretty mystifying, but the science and understanding of how a motorcycle takes corners is actually really cool. Because riding a motorcycle is all about balance. That's what sets it apart from other vehicles. Like, sure, a car has four wheels and it can go around corners pretty fast, but there's nothing beautiful about it. Rider and bike in perfect harmony, dragging parts through a corner. To me, it's the best part about riding. The fact that a motorcycle leans through corners is what makes them so special in my opinion. There's no other vehicle that has that kind of low level flight feeling. Really riding a motorcycle faster on a racetrack is as close as we're gonna get as normal people to being a pilot. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about the centrifugal force, the force of gravity, the gyroscopic effects of the bike, the radius of the turn, the traction limit of the tires, and many other factors that contribute to how a motorcycle gets around a corner. So let's get into it. So there's three main forces that act on a motorcycle when it takes a turn. When a motorcycle enters a curve, the centrifugal force pulls it outward. Now this force exists in cars as well as when you turn, you notice that you lean out of the corner. The greater the speed at which a motorcycle enters the corner and the sharper the curve, the more centrifugal force is applied to it. The second force acting on a bike is gravity. Hopefully I don't have to explain that one to you, but it is the force that pulls everything down to the earth. Now, while the force of gravity is constant, the center of gravity must stay balanced so that the motorcycle stays planted on terra firma. And the third force is centripetal force, which pulls the bike inward towards the corner. This force is generated by the friction between the tires and the road and it acts against the centrifugal force trying to pull the bike outward. Now, leaning a motorcycle is necessary in order for all these forces to stay balanced. Without leaning the bike over, the centrifugal force would literally just pull the bike outwards of the corner, making it impossible to navigate. It's like when you see a rider go wide and go off a turn, they didn't lean far over enough to complete the corner. By initiating a lean, you're essentially balancing the force of gravity and the centrifugal force that's acting on the motorcycle through the tires, maintaining grip and balance. Leaning your bike over creates centripetal force that redistributes all those forces we were talking about. As the speed and radius of the corner increases, so too must your lean angle. Riders initiate leaning by counter steering, which is very different from a car and one of the most misunderstood concepts about motorcycling in general. If you have your handlebars of the bike, you don't actually turn in the direction of it, you push the motorcycle in the direction, causing the wheel to go in the opposite way of where you're really going. You can even see this in bicycles. Whenever you go left, the bicycle momentarily goes right and then left. It's actually pretty cool to see. Now that's gonna shift the center of gravity of the motorcycle and leads us to talk about the next force, gyroscopic forces of the machine. Gyroscopic forces play a significant element in how a motorcycle behaves. They affect the bike's stability, handling, and the ability to lean. The gyroscopic effect on a motorcycle is due in large part to the rotation of the front and rear wheel and the rotation of the crankshaft in the middle of the motorcycle. As the mass of a wheel spins around an axis, it resists rotation due to angular momentum. You can actually try this at home. If you have a small little wheel, you put it through a pencil, you spin it, you try to turn it, it doesn't want to turn. This is why at speed, a motorcycle becomes easier to ride because gyroscopic forces try to keep the motorcycle upright. You can even see this in some examples in racing where the rider gets ejected from the bike and the bike just kind of keeps going upright along its merry way. This is why I say a lot of times on the channel that the bike wants to stay upright. Don't fight it. This is why motorcycles also tend to feel very different at slow speeds versus higher speeds, where the gyroscopic effect is more pronounced and the effect of counter steering is more direct and intuitive. At lower speeds, it can sometimes feel like we are steering directly into the turn, but in reality, counter steering is working all the time. It's just that you don't feel that force as much at lower speeds as the wheels aren't spinning. Remember, counter steering happens all the time. It's just that you don't feel that force as heavily all the time. Now, the rotation of an engine also has a lot of bearing on how the motorcycle acts and behaves. One example I like to talk about here on the channel is that not only are 600s lighter than 1000s on track, but their cranks are so much smaller and they rev more freely that they end up feeling way lighter than 1000s on track as well. Many modern race bikes actually use counter-rotating crankshafts to offset some of this effect as well, popularly seen in Ducati models. If an engine 
engine's crankshaft rotates in the same direction as the wheels, it will resist turning more. But if it rotates in the opposite direction, it will make it more agile and lighter. All right, if you told me that I would have two yellow giveaway bikes for 2024, I don't think I had that on my bingo card, honestly. But this is our Cosmic Yellow Street Triple 765 RS. This is our new giveaway bike on yamminoob.co. Become a member for your best chance to win. You can stack up your entries, assign them to this giveaway bike, and then we do more giveaway bikes, you can do that as well. You get access to the Discord server, exclusive content, discounts on merch, and so much more. Head over to the website and do not miss your chance to win this machine. Now, as we discussed, the higher the speed of the motorcycle and the tighter the radius of the turn, the more lean is required to complete it. But lean angle is limited. Sometimes it's limited by the geometry of the bike. Sometimes it's limited by hard parts dragging and scraping across the ground. Oh, already scraping hard parts. Other times, lean angle is limited by the tires. This is known as the traction limit. If you've been to a race track or you've watched MotoGP on TV, you've seen some motorcycles doing insane lean angles. A motorcycle's ability to maintain those lean angles is due to the grip levels of the tires. And one of the most amazing facts is that most of these motorcycle tires are maintaining that grip on a surface area smaller than a credit card. I feel like we ask a lot out of our tires and we don't really give them the thanks they deserve. Traction is determined by tire compound, tire shape, and the conditions of the road. A super sticky, soft sport bike tire on a dry, hot track is gonna have a ton of grip. Conversely, cold, rotted out cruiser tires on a dusty, gravelly road is gonna have very little traction. Motorcycle tires have a finite amount of grip and tires have a lot of forces acting on them between braking, accelerating, and leaning over. It's also why with motorcycle tires, you can't ask for abrupt levels of grip. You gotta ease into it and it's why trail braking is such an effective technique as well. Asking for sudden high levels of grip out of a tire is typically not gonna work. Imagine the situation where you grab a fistful of front brake or you massively accelerate out of a corner, you will cause tire slip. Whereas progressive slow inputs can actually create more grip. Now the last component of leaning a motorcycle includes body positioning. Possibly one of the most favorite topics people like to discuss and look at on the internet because we all wanna look cool on our motorcycles. By adjusting your position on the bike, you can actually change where the center of gravity is and allow for more lean angles and for allow for a different type of lean angle as well. Under normal riding conditions, what I call the ADV Touring Dad style, neutral riding position offers plenty of grip through the tires and you don't need to do anything too crazy. You maintain the same lean angle with the bike and you go through a turn. As long as you're following the speed limit, you should be pretty good. However, during higher speed riding or even track day riding or racing, you will notice that you're going to require body position at some point in order to navigate the corners effectively, safely, and at the speed you want to. Because the rider plays such a big role in the handling of the motorcycle overall, you really need to consider body position when trying to extract maximum performance. Consider the fact that a motorcycle rider that weighs about 200 pounds with all of their gear is a third of the total weight of rider and bike of about 600 pounds on track. That's gonna make a big difference if you're sliding and moving over and changing the center of gravity to return. By shifting over your weight towards the inside of the corner, you can actually allow the motorcycle to lean less, actually maximizing grip and being able to stay on the bike for power for longer. The real fast guy's secret is to keeping your bike as upright as possible so you can stay on the gas as long as possible. And the name of the game with that is reducing lean angles and that starts with body position. So when an experienced racer or track day professional has theoretically maxed out the lean of their motorcycle, they can shift their weight off the bike even more and get the bike to get that little bit extra lean and go that little bit faster too. This is why here on the channel we say body position is important, but it should not be the first thing you think about, especially as a novice or intermediate level track day rider. You can go pretty darn fast on a racetrack not thinking about your motorcycle body position at all and just focusing on your throttle and brakes and lines. So there you have it, a Yami Noob physics lesson for the day. Leaning is a necessary component of riding a motorcycle, and whether you like to drag elbow at the racetrack or just take it nice and slow through your local twisties, your motorcycle has to lean to turn. Riders lean the bike to balance the forces inward, outward, and downward. 
And the greater the speed and the tighter the radius, the more lean angle you're gonna have to ask from your motorcycle. And when you ask for a lot of lean, you better have the right technique, the right tires, and the right grip levels to allow that sick ass lean. I personally think that one of the coolest parts about riding is the fact that motorcycles lean over. It is a magical feeling once you really figure it out. They are so dynamic and interesting as vehicles, and I truly think they're one of the best on the road. I hope you enjoyed today's video and you learned something new. Thanks so much for watching, and we will catch you guys in the next one. All right, everybody, our time is up here on this video. I hope you had fun. If you want to keep the fun going, become a member on Yamini Back Hill. You can join the Discord server, ask me questions, hang out with me, submit stuff for the live stream, and best of all, get entered to win our amazing giveaway bikes. This Triumph Street Triple 765 is our newest giveaway bike. Make sure you get entered to win, because do you want to miss this? I wouldn't want to miss I want to keep this bike, honestly, but I can't. I have to give it away to somebody, so why not make it you?